Hi, you guys. It's Lisa. <clears throat> Excuse me, the scratchy throat. I um, feel fine. I, I just had a little frog there. What am I doing today? Today we are going to create some mixed media Christmas cards. And I just wanted to show you the four I made last year. And I will link above the um, video from that in case you wanted to check it out. So here is one. I made four, like I said, four designs. So season's greetings with Sean's uh, pine cone stencil. This one is obviously a cardinal. Um, thinking of you, and we used the pine bow on there also. This one is her deer stencil. Happy holidays! We did some stenciling in the back there. I like how that turned out. And then our last one is a Christmas tree, and I really, really like that one. I may have to do something similar to this again this year, but I'll try not to, um, you know, make it exactly so that you can have your options. So I made the mixed media front for all four of these cards, and you can see these two are the original. You, they've got all the texture and the paint and everything on them. And then what I did is I took the um, mixed media panel to the printers and I photocopied them on some heavy duty cardstock paper and this is how they turned out. So these are actually photocopies. And I don't know who ended up with my originals, but um, someone did. I don't know. They're, they're missing in action. But um, I thought these were super cool cards, and I thought I'd make some this year for you also. Um, I'll show you what I got out on my desk, and we'll go from there. Um, this is obviously some mashed potatoes. I like to use this cardboard because it's really, really flexible, uh, really, really uh, sturdy, heavy duty. So I cut this down into my um, four and a quarter by five and a half sheets. So they're card front size. So here's a regular card and like that now of course if you wanted to do them five by seven you go right ahead eight by ten go right ahead if you wanted just to do them and frame your mixed media piece all 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 perfect go right ahead same techniques just different size okay so i got four of those like i said i'm going to do four um, different types um, I'll show you what I dug out for ephemera so this was just an image that I had from a greeting card I save all my greeting cards from the years uh, previous and I liked those Cardinals I have this Tim Holtz stencil let's see what I can hold it up to here we go this one is poinsettias, obviously. I'll try and link it below if I can find it. I'm sure he's got it out for sale. This one is by Sean Petit, of course, and this is Christmas Berries and Evergreen. I dug that out because I really like what that's going. Um, this one here, not sure uh, the name of it, but just something I had in my stash and I thought that it may fit this size. Look at it, it fits it perfect. So that's gonna be a quick and easy one. We'll definitely do that one. Another stencil by Sean Petit. Um, this one is called Tis the Season and this was really calling to me, Merry and Bright. And I thought that might fit right on the front there. Look at that. Oh, you can't see that at all, can you? So right on the front of a card base. So that was interesting to me. Um, I had some a snowflake stencil in my stash. And I thought, 
we may need some snowflakes. And then I wanted to show you this really quickly. I'll set this down so you can see. Um, I cut out a lot of snowflakes last year for some mixed media projects that I had. And I saved these um, where the uh, snowflakes came out of and so I have a whole bunch of stencils that I can use and I thought well maybe I'll use them this year in workshops but <laughs> uh, no one knew that we were going to have corona and we can't do uh, workshops right now so I'll save them I also brought out this one which is plaid Love this stencil. I thought that would be really cool. Another Sean Petit stencil here. This one is called Dear Trio. Used it last year, but I'll try and use it a little bit different this year. I think that's a really great one. And then we have this one, which is a Spring Wreath by Sean Petit. Well, this one was calling to me because of the size. It is the size of a card front. So I think we'll use that too. So I am going to set this aside. Lots of fun things to work with. I am going to show you my papers I dug out. And please don't laugh. This is how much Christmas paper I have. That's a lie. I have this paper pad also and my sister gave me this she must have got it um, maybe a rummage sale or something like that and this is all the Christmas paper that I have I do not hoard paper like a lot of people I know um, and that is totally their thing that's fine if I have too much of something it just makes my craft room smaller and smaller and smaller and it gives me anxiety so I try not to do that um, I liked this uh, paper pad here and of course I've got it all ripped apart but I used it last year on several um, projects and I believe it's by Carabella Studio I will look it up and I will try and link it below and there are some other papers that would work I'm not sure if I'm going to use it but um, in some really old paper here this is really old uh, where is it by holiday paper pad by my big ideas so I do not know about that but I thought that little gingerbread cookie is adorable so I might want to do something with that um, I'm going to set it aside and keep my desk as clean as I can for you and also um, I've got this this is by uh, Goodwill obviously dollar 49 and it's a Christmas hymnal glad tidings and look at all the wonderful Christmas music in there so I like to start with some collage papers and I just picked this out and I thought I would do all of my backgrounds here my four backgrounds I'm going to cover with some music and some papers I'm going to use my matte medium to do that and a big brush of course I'm going to cover these and come back and show you what I have you know we've done this hundreds of times where we're just covering our substrate to get rid of the blank canvas the blank you know uh, substrate that's looking at us and giving us an anxiety and not letting us start so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I will be right back with you okay here's how they look pretty easy we just put the papers down matte medium let them dry here's this one 
This one has a little layer of gesso on it, real light. And this one, I was putting gesso down on it, and I wanted to do a reverse stencil technique on here. So I wanted to start my video and show you. Here's the poinsettia stencil, lining that right up towards the edge there. I put gesso down like you saw and just wiping it, picking it up through that stencil. Really cool technique. Very cool. Just going to do a little on this side. Wipe that up so that it is complete and all the way through. Sorry about my phone there. And so we're just going to go ahead and work on the others. And I think I have a plan in my mind now. So this one needs to dry because that gesso is pretty wet. So going ahead, adding just gesso to the background here, pushing those papers to the background so they're not so bold. But yet I do want to see the um, green and the music notes through the gesso. So I'm going to just pick a little bit of that up. That one's done. See how quick and easy they are? Very rewarding too um, when you're going to give these away. Now, like I said, I did copies of mine last year. Um, I have plenty of Christmas cards left from my stash from last year, so I don't have to make um, all too many. Um, I'm doing this just for the video for you so we can create something together. And um, these would be really great, obviously, if you could send originals to all of your people. I send out... I think my number this year is between 65 and 70 Christmas cards. So there is no way in the world I'd be able to hand make all of these. I'm just going to trim the little edges off if there's any overhanging. And while these are drying, I'm going to get out my supplies. And we're going to see what's going to work here. I know um, this one is definitely going to be the deer. And I did dig out this um, tree stencil here. And I'm going to do the uh, doe, female deer. So I'm going to put a few um, trees in the back. I'm going to grab out my archival inks and some supplies for doing my stenciling, clean up my area here, and we will get into making these Christmas cards. It will be really, really fun. Okay, we're back, and this is how the backgrounds turned out. I uh, lost all of my audio footage for the next two sections, so you'll have to be uh, bear with me. I am trying to do a voice over here. So I am just um, looking at the backgrounds and seeing which ones are going to work with what stencils. And here is the background, and I think this spring wreath is going to be the one that I like to use for this card and I want to put it a little offset because if it's right in the middle I think that it's um, a little less pleasing to the eye so you're supposed to put it over to the right or left. I have library green and fern green in archival ink and I have these um, makeup brushes that I use for my stenciling. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my stenciling 
and you are going to be able to see the outcome here in just a little bit. Adding both colors of green to the stencil to give it a little bit of depth and dimension. Now I'm going to grab my other stencil that I have and it's by Tim Holtz. I will look up the name for you and list it below. And I want to put in some of those little tiny leaves from the poinsettia. And I'm going to actually use a little bit of mm, painter's tape and I'm going to uh, block off some of those areas so that I don't have to be so careful with my stencil and it works pretty well I just want to use one little leaf and if I block off the other areas I don't like I said I don't have to be so careful when I'm stenciling and that seems to work pretty well for me just using that and there is the little leaf that I'm going to use so I'm going to go ahead and put that all around on the spring leaf and it's going to look like a Christmas wreath that will be nice I'm going to use my um, library green the darker of the two and go ahead and put all of that around the wreath and it's going to be beautiful. All right, you can see that I put one of the poinsettias down to the bottom right of the wreath, and that made it really pop. Now I'm going to use my Schoolhouse Red by Simon Says Stamp, and I'm going to put part of that poinsettia up in the right hand corner and that's going to bring your eye around the piece and make the red um, more balanced so just going ahead and masking off some of those leaf areas lining it up to the edge of my card that is the front and going ahead and using my makeup brush and adding that to the corner. I think that it gave it really, really um, nice um, balance to the front of the card. Super nice, and I love this red. It's called Schoolhouse Red, and it's by Simon Says Stamp. It's important to have a good red in your craft arsenal, and I think this one is a really, really good choice. So going ahead, getting through that stencil and you'll be able to see here in a minute how cool it looks. I think this one turned out real well. I think they all turned out well, so I'm not going to be um, biased or judgmental. I think they all turned out real nice. And like I said, um, it is so fun to do making your Christmas cards handmade. And then if you make the copies, it would even be, um, you know, cost efficient and uh, quite quick. So I'm just going to add in the little leaves around that poinsettia, lining that back up and going back in with my library green, the darker of the two greens that I have. How many cards do you have to make? How many do you send out for your holiday card giving? I think this year it's going to be um, the most important year that we've ever had trying to make connections and stay, uh, stay, stay connected with our friends and family. So I'm going to um, clean up this area and put my little dots in, my little berries. And what I'm going to use with that is going to be um, what I call an em em dry embossing tool and some red paint. I'm just grabbing out a color of red paint that I have in my stash. And I was thinking that I didn't have any red paint. Well, when I took out my my sw uh, swatches of paint colors that I have, I see, look at all the red paint I have. One, two, three, four, five, six different colors of red paint. 
this is the one that I pulled out so I think that it's going to match nicely with that ink so I'm going to use that now see it's very important to have your color swatches especially if you're going uh, shopping for paint you know at the store because then you can take this with you and when you're looking at paint you can say oh well I already have a pink or I already have a blue or the color that you need the most it helps to do that so that you don't get so many duplicates of the same things I tend to uh, gravitate to some of the same colors um, and that's just me you may not but I know that if I like a certain color I'll be like oh this is a great color well I've already purchased it so um, some people don't want to have five different colors of the same red paint and that would be me now this is a dry embossing tool it has a large and a small point on each end I'm going to just pick up the paint with the ball of the end and make the little berries with the red paint this is a quick and easy way to add those berries and um, they give them a nice rounded uh, look to the berries too when they're dry you just need to be careful so they do not uh, smear while you're working on your piece I'm going to finish the berries and I'm going to actually put yellow dots inside the poinsettias. I looked it up on Pinterest to see if there was yellow inside the poinsettias and there are, there is yellow, there is yellow inside the poinsettias. So now I can really, really see that this spring wreath um, that I started with is now really looking nice and Christmassy. So I'm really quite happy with it. Yep, it turns out real nice. Okay, on to the next. We're going to do this cardinal one, and this is the background I chose for it. I cut the cardinal out from the um, copy I made of a Christmas card I had and I'm going to use one of Sean's stencils I will list it below and I believe it says it is um, berries and bows Christmas berries and evergreen excuse me I'm just putting the um, cardinal down with my matte medium I'm speeding this up a little bit since I'm doing a voiceover because I didn't want this to be so so long for you um, I know that there's four cards here but I just wanted to make sure that everyone had enough time to create their own cards instead of watching me create mine using my stencil my archival ink and I'm going to use that um, tree bow that's in the center there and I'm just going ahead with my uh, makeup brush and stenciling that on and I thought that looked real nice I'm going to use the small one and go ahead and create another branch and you can see this card comes together real quick and easy I like cardinals there's lots of people that really enjoy cardinals this time of year adding a little bit of the pine bow to the top there so it looks like the cardinal is maybe nestled in the pine tree and adding a couple more branches for interest then I was thinking that I liked those berries that were on there. I'm going to use my brown and my red. I'm going to first put my brown down using potting soil to put the actual stems of the berries in, not worrying too much about the berries themselves. Um, I am going to go over the berries with the red of course and that is the schoolhouse red and I believe that that's a really good match with the cardinal so um, liking how that turned out 
thinking I needed to put some down um, underneath the cardinal and also up into the right corner to create that um, focal point, you know, that triangle, triangle uh, to keep your eye moving around the piece. So like the berries and I liked that little bit of red accent that was added to the piece. Turning out cute, I think. And I'll go ahead and do the top right corner also. Okay, let's boogie on to the next one. And the next one is going to be the deer. So I decided I wanted to use the dough. And this uh, stencil by Tim Holtz, um, Evergreen Trees. Like I said, I'll link it below. Just using my greens that I have been using. This one I chose Fern Green. And then I'm going to go over the top with a little bit of the darker green to add the dimension that we like so much. I needed to put some trees over to the right also. And we're going to do three total trees because we want the piece to be balanced. I really like this stencil and I'm glad I thought about it to um, use it with the deer. I like to use things that I have in my stash. We don't need to go and purchase more if we already have something that's going to work. So going ahead and placing those trees down and then we're going to put that deer stencil in and that is by Sean and it is called Deer Trio. So I'm going to use my brown archival ink in potting soil and as I was doing this, I was seeing that it was too light. I could see the background through the deer, and that would be kind of silly. So you will see that I put black in and covered up most of that brown and then went back over it with the brown after I used the black. It gave The black gave it a base where it would cover up that background. So yeah, here's where I was looking at my one from last year and I was deciding that I think I probably did that or I probably put the deer in with gesso first and then went over it with archival ink. I think that's probably what I did so that you couldn't see that background through the deer. And here I'm like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, this is way too dark, but don't worry. We'll fix it. There's always ways to fix anything. And I'm just going back with some brown. And it's still too dark, but you'll see in the end, I fix it with my cool new Neo Color crayons. And I really like those. And I like how it turned out. And now I'm just going to add a little bit of brown to connect those areas from the stencil where the legs are kind of well stenciled they have that little bridge area there and not to worry we'll work on those with our charcoal pencil and everything will work out just fine I had a little bit of ink there and I cleaned it up with a little bit of rubbing alcohol I'm liking how it's turning out, so I'm going to use um, some charcoal pencil with that, and you'll see the finished products at the end. Here I'm using the one stencil that says, we wish you a Merry Christmas. I'm going to use my green and my red, and I'm going to give that a real good impression through the stencil. This one is a super quick and easy one. They all really are very easy. It's just taking the time to make them and very rewarding in the end. Well, you'll see in the finished pictures how cute they turned out. So going ahead and giving that we wish you a uh, the green and then I'm using my schoolhouse red to, excuse me, do the Merry Christmas in the bottom. 
I like that color combination and obviously I used it that way last year because my stencil is still got the ink on it from last year and I decided that I wanted to use my stencil that was a uh, plaid here I'm using that yellow paint and I'm just going through the star at the top there with my finger doing a little bit of finger painting there how cute and just wiping that up getting rid of that excess paint here I'm bringing in that plaid stencil and I'm going to go around the border with the black archival ink turning it upside down here just so I had a little bit of an easier time and I decided to go around all four corners all four edges excuse me because um, three just uh, was not finished enough but look at how cute this stencil is this is a keeper also I really have some great Christmas stencils I'll have to keep making some more Christmas projects what do you think is there anything anyone would like to see I definitely could use the um, comments and what someone would like to see I definitely would go ahead and do whatever you're interested in sometimes when you do two videos a week for many 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 weeks in a row you run out of ideas so anyone having any creative inspiration for me would be wonderful I liked how that one turned out also I like them all like I said so what next what next okay we're gonna give all of these a wash with burnt umber acrylic paint and water I do this all the time you know that I do you know and um, I like the effect I like how it makes everything look so vintagey grungy and um, I'm thinking about sentiments at this point because that's what will be next so making this paint a uh, real liquidy liquidy uh, fluid and I'm gonna go right like this all over get these out of the way here I've got a spray bottle just go like that we're going to let it drip and, and make a beautiful beautiful yep love it needs to set aside needs to be set aside to dry I've got an area behind me that we're working on now for our deer Cute. Give it a little water. I think this guy's gonna get some snowflakes too. Okay, I like how that's looking. And these are gonna take a little bit to dry. Not too long though. I mean, I'm not putting a ton of paint on it. I can see I didn't make enough where better there we go I like how this wreath turned out turned out good
taking off enough um, paint so that you can see that poinsettia there in the background. I really like this one. Yep, it turned out really good. I, I actually like them all. I mean, I have to take this phone call. Sorry. All right, sorry about that. Oops, I'm making a mess here. Trying not to make a mess. Okay, this last one. Let's see what this one will turn out to look like. Isn't it fun when you're creating? You you have no idea, at least for me, I have no idea. I, I'm like, I don't know. We're going to do some Christmas cards. We're going to see what we can do. We bring out our stuff from our stash, all the things that we cherish and love. And then it's like, oh, well, that kind of turned out cool, you know. So you just got to believe in yourself. Believe it. And you can do it. Look at this one with some drips, huh? Oh, might be a little too uh, crazy for a Christmas card, but we can fix it. Yeah, I like it. I like them all. Okay, I'm going to clean up my mess. I'm going to let these dry. And then, uh, probably tomorrow now, we will work on the finishing touches and the details. And I got something yesterday that came. I have been wanting these Neo colors for the longest time. Probably... Um, over a year and I haven't gotten one and now I've watched uh, Layla, Layla I can never say her name right Lolly Mill and she uses Neo Colors and uh, of course she has a great big huge set uh, I just got the 15 I'll link them below um, super excited to get to use them Pretty cool, huh? Pretty neat, pretty neat. I don't know what these are, some little stickers and stuff, but oh, don't they look fun? So hopefully we can use those um, on the finishing touches on our cards, and we will get right back to them shortly, letting those dry because they've got quite a bit of paint on them. And I got to clean up my area and... We will be back with the finishing touches. Here's how they are turning out. Okay, so I finished these three. Put some snow on there. And to do that, I used my Doc Martens, Dr. P.H. Martens Bleed Proof White. And I used it with a makeup sponge through a stencil. The stencil looks like this, hard to see there. Simon says stamp, and it is called Falling Snow. So again, another Simon says stamp product. Um, I like their products. I like them a lot. So I like how that turned out, that deer. Yep, I put some white down. And I used my new Neo Color 2 uh, crayons, Neo Color, and they are water soluble. So I did um, darken the edges, used charcoal on the bottom, gave them some ground to stand on, and then I did spray it with my fixative. And the one that I am using right now looks like this. It is Minwax water-based polyacrylic uh, clear semi-gloss. This one you have to use outside because it is toxic. So I just step outside my front door quick give it a couple of sprays and this is how it looks nice and shiny everything is sealed now I would put that on a card base this is a plain card base and bam there it is I would use some heavy-duty adhesive 
and that would finish that card. All right, here is this one. We wish you a Merry Christmas. I just used my black Stabilo pencil and just put some edges on there, blended it out with a little water and my um, paintbrush. I used my white pastel pencil, gave it a few highlights, went around the edge with my uh, double scoop black gelato just around the edge, smudged it with my finger like I do all the time, and sprayed it with my polyacrylic spray. That one's done. This one here, I have stickers on there. It says, we wish you a Merry Christmas. I did some brown Stabilo pencil around some of these leaves to make it pop up from the background. I used the double scoop gelato around the edges, some white pastel pencil on the poinsettias, and also I did put yellow centers on the poinsettias and then edged it with the black double scoop gelato, sprayed it with my polyacrylic spray, and this one's ready for a card base. So this one I have left, and I wanted to save one uh, to do with you quickly. Um, the sentiment I believe I'm going to use is the um, Winter Wonderland. I like that. And these are stickers from Tim Holtz, uh, Christmas stickers. I don't know if they still have them or not. These are quite old, but they're very um Useful if you're going to be making some Christmas cards. Here's my little tin of my finishing items. This is a 6B Extra Soft Charcoal Pencil. And I'm going to go around my cardinal with that, blending it with my finger. I may use my black Stabilo, but this is how I'm going to start right now. And I just wanted to do uh, finish one of them with you. Um, there's a bit of shading, of course, and the more you enjoy doing it, <laughs> the more you get into it. But I'm just kind of trying to go a little quick and easy here for you. And then you'd have a couple of help. Cards done. Now, like I said, you could take these to the printer and you could ask them to make some photocopies. Then go ahead and cut those out, put them on your card bases, and you would be all set. Here I'm using my black Stabilo pencil just to do a shadow under there. I've got a white, uh, wet paper towel. And sometimes I like using the black Stabilo. It just uh, blends a little bit easier, if you can see that. And I just wanted to add a little black under there. Giving a little black to the wings because it's already there. So I'm just accentuating what's already there. Doing a little on the mask giving a line on the beak. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Don't want that to be too wide. Just blending that out a little bit. This is a little line here for the, where his belly is. See, that looks cute already. I'm just going to use a little bit of Charcoal pencil to blend those pine boughs, connecting them to the branches, just connecting them there. I'm going to add a little color to my, oh, look at that, I just broke one. Oh! <gasps> 
Oh, that's sad. I didn't even hardly get to use it and I broke it. You know how you feel when you were a kid and you broke your brand new crayons? <laughs> that's how I feel. Oh, sad. Oh, well. There, that adds uh, quite a bit of pop there. Let's try not to break this one, too. Just uh, going to add a little water because they're water soluble. And look how great. They just blend beautifully, don't they? Good purchase, I think. I have a little water here is what I'm dinging in. Good purchase. Like I said, I think I'll really like these. Just a little water. Just wanted to make these real quick and easy for you. I think that he needs... Uh, look at this one's broken too. I wonder if they were broken in my box. That's unfortunate. Oh, well. I suppose I could complain, but... Nobody likes a whiner, right? All right, so now I'm going to put just a couple of marks on these berries here. Give them that little highlight, which I think they need. Maybe a little like this. I think he's cute. Couple of those highlights up there. Then we're going to go around the edges with... We're going to put our sentiment on. What did I say we were going to do? Um, how about... How about peace on earth. I don't remember what I said we were going to do. So I take off the sticker. I have this black um, permanent marker. I go around the edges. You could use your Sharpie, whatever you got. This is just black permanent. I go around the edges and I could put it on like that. But I want to cut it into thirds because I think it looks neater that way. So I'm just cutting the piece, the on, and the earth. Now I'm going to go around those exposed edges. So I think I'll go right here. And I'm going to do it a little crooked because I don't feel like taking the time to get out my T-ruler and making it straight. And I think this looks just fine like that if you do it on purpose. I'm going to take my black Stabilo pencil. I'm going to go around these real gently. that. My brush. A little bit of water. And you see how neat that is? It just, uh, it just melts that Stabilo pencil. I just love the way that that works. All right, so what do you think? We've got four Christmas cards done. But like I said, you know, if you need to, if you feel like it, go ahead and 
Take them to your printer. Um, everybody knows that Christmas cards are very, very um, needed this year, I think. One other thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to take this Doc Martens and my embossing tool. Now I did the berries on the wreath with the bigger end. I'm going to use the smaller end and I'm just going to grab one dot and I'm going to dot that cardinal's eye. I think that looks really cool. I'm going to try not to smudge that. And I'm going to go around the edge. I'm just using this envelope here. Go around the edge of my card, smearing it with my finger. And then I'll take this one outside to spray also. But I want to give you a quick look at all of them finished. Here we go. There. I like them. Um, I hope you do too. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. Make sure you share with a friend. Comment. I love comments. And I comment back on every single one of them. So if you would be so inclined, please comment. Give it a thumbs up and support my channel. We'll see you again next week. Um... No, let's do Saturday, Saturday, art journal page. I'll work on something for that. And have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Enjoy the people that you can um, communicate with, talk with. Possibly you'll get to see someone. Um, and just stay safe, okay? Happy Thanksgiving from my house to yours. Thank you.